Hello. So right now I'm standing in the exact spot where Chief Brody went running along this rock wall here towards the Jaws Bridge, what is known as the Jaws Bridge, in order to save his son Michael's life from what was impending doom. Incredible. What do you get when you combine mechanical sharks that hardly worked, a starring cast that didn't always get along, and a 27-year-old rookie filmmaker under constant pressure from studio execs. You get the world's first blockbuster, the start of the summer theater season, and the forging of a movie-making partnership between two legends that would go on to produce one cinematic masterpiece after another. So join me now as I visit all the filming locations, well, most of them, from the 1975 one of a kind classic, Jaws. Oh, Nick P, you're gonna need a bigger channel. So here we are now at South Beach, where the opening scene, the opening scene of this iconic film took place. Now, I was just talking to a local who's lived here for over 30 years because of the surging flood water I was told all these new dunes you see here now were unfortunately flattened but they were much larger before there was definitely much more beach so things change over time then where Chrissy Watkins enters the water is actually a different beach altogether it's actually Edgartown Beach I never want them to remake this classic movie. But what I want to see, more than anything, is the making of Jaws. <laughs> that would be special. A movie about the making of the movie. Unfortunately, a little difficult to match up the exact spots here because for the reasons I already stated, but don't worry. <laughs> this is going to be a it's going to be a pretty special video. So stay tuned. Right here is where the Brody House once stood. But many years back, it was demolished and rebuilt. They say that that was the structure used for the garage. If it was, it was completely remodeled. It is possible I do not know for sure, one way or another. So that means the driveway would have been right in front of it, and this became the new spot for the driveway. And then backs up. Right here is where the original house would have been. Very cool. Guess they would have been on that swing set right about there. Be careful, will you? In this town? Hey! Oh, he, he left. He left New York seeking the more peaceful, more peaceful life to raise his kids, have a family make a difference <laughs> only that wasn't going to be the case his life was about to become more chaotic than it has ever been <laughs> awesome the silent is beautiful by the way I'm really enjoying my stay here fantastic
right there is where the billboard would have been located for the 50th annual regatta of Amity Island. <laughs> Crazy. Yep, right, right around there. Now, they had to relocate the lighthouse. I believe it was once right there and they had to move it over just to there. Awesome. This is so cool. I've been wanting to visit this area basically since I seen the movie. Really, really cool. Just fill it out. Fill out the form. Just fill it out. See here, they definitely put an extension on this side. Definitely underwent some modifications over the years. So, so great. Chief Brody would have exited what was the Amity Police Station. He would have come out of here. Here's what he would have seen with his, from his point of view as he walked out into the street. Davis Lane. Turn this corner right here. Beautiful. Look at that. You would have went walking right down this street here again past all these buildings. Here is where the medical examiner's office would have been located. I love it. Now here is the Chappaquiddick House. In the movie, it would have been the, the Amity Gazette. The Meadows would have came walking right out of this door here, trying to head off the chief, hearing the news, fearing the worst before a panic is created on the island. <sighs> And that part was played by Carl Gottlieb. He was a co-writer. Amity Island, what an experience. It's amazing how everything basically looks exactly the same as it did some 47 years ago. Hey, look Hello, at Sharon. the kids kids to my fence. Eight and nine year old. Hey, glasses, yeah. Huh? Glasses. Hey, look at this. They did it with that thing. Bedhead Harry. Here's where Bedhead Harry's bike rental would have been located. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look The majority of Amity Island, the fictitious Amity Island, was centered in and around Edgar Town here in Martha's Vineyard. Very picturesque. And right here, this is where Roy Scheider walks in to get his paintbrushes. This place right here, which is now the Port Hunter. And you see this across the street, vaguely through, from the inside, outside. As he walks in. The summer kings come down here in June. You haven't got one thing on here I order.
Not a beach umbrella, not a sun lounger, no beach balls. If I can't get service from the sun, I'm going to get service. Thanks again. No problem. And what time do you guys open for business? Uh, 5.30 tonight. 5.30. So Chief Brody would have stepped out with supplies in hand, all the necessary materials to make the signs so the beach is closed. And his deputy Hendrix would have pulled up right here. Amazing. I couldn't call him in. There's no phones out there. Okay, come on, get out of there. Take this stuff back to the office and get to work on those signs. Right. Beach is closed. No swimming. By order of the Amity PD. And let Polly do the printing. What's the matter with my thing? Let Polly do the printing. If Mayor Vaughn would have stepped out of this door right here. Chief Brody! Right around there. And when he would have called to the chief. Listen, we had a shark attack at South Beach this morning, Mayor. Fatal! I've got to batten down the beach. Gearing up for the 4th of July. The banner would have been right above the water and Main Street intersection. Oh, wow. Legendary. And again, Mayor Vaughn would have came out of this door here. All the people in charge of the town eager, eager to find out and learn just what Chief Brody had in mind. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Oh yeah, this island is, is still not short on characters, that's for sure. Wherever they may be from originally. Oh. I'm okay to stay here while it moves? Or like... Uh, just move back a little bit further. Just so you're, yeah, and that's good. Thanks. these days it doesn't do the spin but this was the ferry that was taken across right it's all psychological you yell barracuda everybody says huh what you yell shark we've got a panic on our hands on the fourth of july Okay, you can take us back now. Wait for it. Wait for it. What the? Where's the reef? <laughs> Isn't this crazy? Look at how different the waterline is now. It's, it is so much farther down the beach. It's incredible. I couldn't believe it. When I got over here and I found the exact location for where Chief Brody pulls his son aside to tell him to go into the pond, as, as was just shown here, I was, I'm like, wait a minute, something's not right here. Huh? What? A what? You see the new rocks that were definitely not out in the sun anywhere near as long as the rock wall that was originally there back during production. Those, those rocks are far more sun bleached or sun stained, at least comparatively speaking. And um, yeah, this was fascinating to learn. Yeah, so basically what I learned 
when I did a little research about this area at Joseph Sylvia State Beach, especially in this particular spot, it was very susceptible to flooding because as you see what was the ocean line along the beach during production, it's pretty close to the main road there and the main road is the only road. On the other side is more water. So naturally, during a storm, you got a serious problem. You're not going to be able to travel by car until the water recedes back to its normal level. I'm guessing they dredged along the coast, dug up a lot of sand, and just basically extended the beach forward. So I had to loosely figure out the exact spots of where everything was laid out, which was extremely challenging. I think I did a pretty good job at it, but again, I gotta be off a little bit here and there because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not a computer. But yeah, it, it, it was just, it was fascinating to, to realize that. That was all redone as well. That's not the same bridge from the movie, but it's in the same spot. But again, I, th I think the water would have started right around here. Let me get my raft and go back out in the water. Let me see your fingers. Alex, Kintner, they're beginning to prune. Just let me go out a little longer. Just 10 more minutes. Thanks. Well, they bring in a... All I want to know, I just want to know one simple thing. When do I get to become an islander? Ellen, never, never. You're not born here, you're not an islander. <laughs> we know all about you, Chief. You don't go in the water at all, do you? Some bad hat, Harry. That famous dolly zoom. There was dolly set up all over the beach. Basically, the dolly pulled back but they zoomed forward at the same time to create that effect. This movie did to the beach what Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho did to the shower. You know what? Forget the beach. When I was a kid, after I saw this movie for the first time, large swimming pools looked suspect to me. I have a vivid imagination. Small story, I'm gonna bury it as deep as I can. The ad is gonna run in the back along with the grocery ad. Now here is the Edgar Town Town Hall, which stood in as Amity Town Hall. But this room here did not exist back during production. I've seen some videos where some YouTubers believe that this was the room used for that scene. This room was not even here. This was actually parking lot. Okay. Where the building ended was basically where the side entrance is now located. So unfortunately, that room as a whole does not exist anymore. It's part of what is now the town assessor's office, part of what is now the hallway. From the inside, you can see those buildings there. And again, some of the area by the side entrance. So Quint would have been seated right here during that famous introduction of his character where he scratched nails down the blackboard. <laughs> You all know me, know how I earn a living. I'll catch this bird for you, but it ain't gonna be easy. Now, a member of the town council who worked at the hall was nice enough to let me in. I was there in May. Technically, this person broke the rules for me, which was very nice of that person. So I couldn't really get into the office. But all that really exists from the movie is the window. But anyway, the hallway is the main shot that still exist in the offices you see running alongside the hall. Mr. Mayor, Chief, ladies and gentlemen. Nonetheless, very cool to be inside here and check out this location and at least we, we still have the hallway, right? All right, very cool, moving on. So right here is where the Amity Island Harbor Master Shack would have stood. Frank Silver exited that grin. 
And Chief Brody and his deputy would have been walking right here. Trying to catch their breath and figure out how to tell Charlie's wife what happened to her freezer full of meat. That's not funny. That's not funny at all. Would have walked along the dock right here. Talking about what happened to Charlie's holiday roast. This guy here. Hello. Hello, Beck. Young fella, how are you? This is where Hooper met Ben Gardner as he arrived on the docks. Who gave him a friendly warning in hopes that he was not going to be going out with the Armada of Bozos. Hey, I hope you're not going out with those nuts, are you? Sloop, don't race sail. You're just going to love it. You got a paddle on the boat? No, I got a uh, so skull out of here. Officer, officer, wait a second. Wait a second. Just... How many guys are gonna put aboard that boat? But that was safe, right? Yeah, that ain't safe. Please, please, help me get those guys out of the boat, will you please? Share with me. Gentlemen, gentlemen, the officer asked me to tell you that you're overloading that boat. They're all gonna die. Yeah. Hold on. Well, man. then, can you tell me if there's a good restaurant or hotel on the island? Yeah, you walk straight ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all gonna die. I think these are the same rocks you see. Amazing. At the edge of the dock, there was like a slab of concrete or something at the top of it, which is no longer there. It's covered with blacktop now. And this is right where. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Richard Dreyfus would have been standing. to help us yeah get them get those roadblock signs out on the highway because we've got more people down here than we can handle yeah what are you doing out walk to them those aren't my people they're from all over the place do you see all the license plates out in the parking lot connecticut rhode island new jersey i'm all by myself hey. uh you know those eight guys in the fantail launch out there yeah well none of them are gonna get out of the harbor alive well, honey that's what i'm talking about you know how i could find chief brody who are you? Matt Hooper. I'm from the uh, Oceanographic Institute. Oh, for Christ's sakes. You're the guy we called. I'm Brody. I'm Brody. Oh, oh I'm very glad to meet you. Yeah, I'm glad to meet you. And Quint would have been seen coming into port with that lighthouse in the background. sarcastic laugh to himself knowing that there's no way that was the right shark. I think it's a McCall. Got a deep throat, Pratt. Yeah, well, but what kind? What kind of shark? It's a tiger shark. A what? A what? <laughs> tiger shark. And I believe they brought that tiger shark up from Florida. I think that's where it was originally captured and or killed. Would have been strung up right here at the end of the dock. Right, that's not the shark. All right, what what I am saying is that it may not be a shark. It's just a slight oh, and I want it's a different to semantics, back. but I don't want to get beaten up. This is uh, Larry Vaughn, our mayor. Uh, Matt's from the Ocean Graphic right. Institute. Oh, nice to meet you. You could definitely start to make out some things have changed pretty considerably over the years. You do see that house in the shot, and that has been remodeled somewhat as well. There was another, there was another building here that was, it must have been torn down, and the building you see now is what was rebuilt in its place. And right around here is where 
Richard Dreyfus would have explained to Roy Scheider the chances that these would-be fishermen caught the exact shark. They weren't good. A hundred to one. Yeah, it's probably a safe estimate. And the chances that these bozos got the exact oh, shark. Oh, there's no other sharks like this in these waters. It's a hundred to one. A hundred to one. Now, I'm not saying that this is not the shark. It probably is, Martin. It probably is. It's Here's where that dramatic scene would have happened. With Alex getting his mother. Chief Brody. Yes. And you knew it. You knew there was a shark out there. You see the expression on his face. It's priceless. He nailed it. He looks like a guy who got slapped in the face and stunned by a mother who just lost her kid. Not a joking matter. This cast was excellent. From top to bottom, everyone did a great job. I'm sorry, Martin. She's wrong. No, she's not. How was your day? <laughs> this fellow YouTuber here at MOV Clips always shares the best scenes from all different movies. I often use his, uh, his clips that he posts as references while I'm out here. He makes my life a lot easier. Someone's property here. That's where, that's the dock. His sons were, were on a boat next to their birthday present. When Chief Brody was yelling at them to get out. And the mother at first was, <laughs> was upset with the chief and then she quickly changed her mind after flipping through some pages of that book. The house was probably demolished because so many buildings and structures on this island are very old. The island itself was first discovered by a British explorer in the early 1600s. Very, I think 1602 if I'm not mistaken. And he first discovered Cape Cod, called it Cape Cod because of the fish found in that area. And then he later named the island next to it, this island, Martha's Vineyard after his newborn daughter at the time and it has nothing to do with vineyards in terms of wine as the name may suggest it was named that because there were wild vines found growing all over the island right here is where that very memorable conversation happened between the chief Hooper and Mayor Vaughn they tried to appeal desperately tried to appeal to the mayor's better judgment to no avail. Now the Jersey Shore shark attacks of 1916 had to somewhat inspire the 1974 book, but author Peter Benchley is on record of denying that justifiable belief. I mean, after all, the incidents are referenced in the movie. And it's going to happen again. It happened before. The Jersey Beach, 1916, there were five, five people killed. chewed up in the surf. In one oh. week. Tell them about the swimmers. And what you see in the movie certainly rings a bell as to what happened back in 1916. Now, there were three mechanical sharks in total. And the sharks not working was what worked out best for this movie. This movie is perfectly paced and the suspense is masterful. Largely due to the shark not even making an appearance, fins aside, until over halfway through the movie. Spielberg resorted to POV shots from the shark's perspective, along with some Hitchcockian effects. It also forced shooting to swell from 55 days to well over 150 days, pushing its original release date of Christmas Day 1974, which would have definitely not made the same splash as what became its release date in the summer of 75, and movie magic happens. That's it. Goodbye. I'm not going to waste my time arguing with a man who's lining up to be a hot lunch. I'm going to see you later, brother. Don't do this. Mr. Vaughn, what we are dealing with here is a perfect engine, uh, an eating machine. 
Now, why don't you take a long, close look at this sign? Those proportions are correct. Love to prove that, wouldn't you? Get your name into the National Geographic. <laughs> Larry, Larry, if we make an effort today, oh, we might man. be able to save August. Then the mayor's car would have been parked right here, right here, where the chief and the mayor had a few less words for one another. But again, the lighthouse was moved from there just to there. It once stood there because of erosion that uh, happened at its foundation. They had to relocate it. And uh, that telephone pole is no longer there as well. August, <laughs> for Christ's sake, tomorrow's the 4th of July and we will be open for business. It's gonna be one of the best summers we've ever had. Lastly, you, you see it. Hooper sitting on a rock. Be one of these rocks here. None of them really resemble the rock he was once sitting on. All right, everybody, on to the next one. Amity Island has long been known for its clean air, clear water, and beautiful white sand beaches. But in recent days, a cloud has appeared on the horizon of this beautiful resort community. A cloud in the shape of a killer shark. Half over the beach. Rody to gotcha, do you read me? Oh, hi, Larry. <laughs> Nobody's going in. Please, get it, boy. The water would have basically come up to here. Amity, as you know, means friendship. The hot dog shack, the lifeguard tower, the arcade, that would have all been right over here this section. So this is the exact spot where Chief Brody would have pulled his son aside. Do me a favor, will you? Do you and the other guys take the boat and put it in the pond instead? And asked him to set the boat in the pond on this side, the estuary side, instead of taking it into the ocean. Pond's for old ladies. I know it's for the old ladies, but just do it for the old man, huh? Please? All right. Thanks. In the movie, the water came up to this point. That is not the case anymore. Right here, where Chief Brody comes running along the bridge before he makes his leap. And top marks to him for doing that himself. He did not use a stuntman. That is definitely Roy Scheider. Very athletic guy. Anyway, he, ru he runs along, and you see him land on the beach. Look, there's no beach here anymore. <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit of sand here, but as you can see, this, this is totally different. It's really amazing to see the changes between both then and now, as far as that goes. Obviously, this is the new bridge. This is not the same bridge, but it's in the same exact spot. I don't need a stunt, man. <laughs> it's not only one of my favorites, it's one of the best movies ever made by far. $10,000, $200 a day, whether I catch him or not. Right where the starring cast of Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfus, and Robert Shaw would have disembarked from. 
to go out to go out on the ultimate quest to capture and kill the monster shark terrorizing the resort community of Amity Island. <laughs> so great. Yep, right here. And Quinn's shack would have stood right here. They constructed it just for filming. And then once filming was finished, they took it down. But it would have stood right here. There would have been a dock. <laughs> And you see this boathouse right here in a shot or two. Yeah, this is mind-blowingly cool. The character Quint, which was brilliantly played by Robert Shaw, was partially based on the local fisherman Craig Kingsbury, who taught Shaw how to speak like a real-life fisherman and sea captain. He also managed to land the role of Ben Gardner, who would later become the headless seahorseman. I, I couldn't resist. Speaking of which, that originally shot scene wasn't satisfying Spielberg or editor Werner Fields. So what they did was they reshot the scene in, of all places, her backyard swimming pool as the crew poured milk in the water to recreate the murky Atlantic Ocean. And what you see in the movie is exactly that. Quint was also partially based on the legendary Montauk fisherman and charter captain Frank Mundus, who shares a record for the largest fish ever caught by rod and reel which was a great white shark. Shocker. Benchley hung out with him on his boat, The Cricket 2, before writing the novel. And I believe Benchley, in response to a question about where the idea from Jaws came from, is quoted in a People magazine article referencing the 1964 Frank Mundus harpooning of a giant great white shark that was estimated to be 4,500 pounds. I'm pretty sure he asked himself, what if one of these monster sharks came into a resort community and wouldn't go away? Tell him I'm going fishing. Jaws features what is arguably the most popular line in movie history. You're going to need a bigger boat. Which was simply, yet brilliantly, ad libbed by Roy Scheider himself. This movie also features what is probably the most recognizable score ever made. The only ones out there giving it competition in that respect would have to be Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Superman, and probably Friday the 13th. By the way, three out of four of those were also made by John Williams. And the three main characters were basically supposed to represent the three sides of man. You had the working class hero and epitome of masculinity in Quint. Give me your hands. Then you had the wealthy college boy Hooper. The intellect of the group. And then there was Brody. You know how to do to support the ship, are you, Mr. Quint? The neutralizing force and voice of reason. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Now in the scene just prior to Quint's famous USS Indianapolis tale, you can see that there's a, there's a great bonding experience between the three leads. You also get a greater sense of resolve here between both characters and the actors. And there's no question after it's learned about Quint's tragic experiences in World War II, Hooper and Quint emerge from this scene with newfound respect for one another. You learn where Quint's passion-driven occupation came from. You know, when you're in Quint's shop there, you see the jaws of great white sharks and other sharks all over his shop. It's a pretty cool thing to see, but... It's more face value, no pun intended. You don't, you don't really think about it beyond that point, but you're like, this guy's obviously obsessed here, you know? 
Like, why did he choose this profession? And it all becomes abundantly clear in this scene. You were on the Indianapolis? 1,100 men went into the water. It's such a natural scene, the way it just unfolds. Jaws was almost completely filmed on Martha's Vineyard, with the exception of some studio and underwater photography in California and live shark footage in Australia. Shark experts Ron and Valerie Taylor are both credited at the end of the film. I read somewhere they tasked a smaller person as a cage diver version of Hooper and equipped them with a smaller cage to create the illusion of a much larger shark in the waters of South Australia. And then you have that awesome conclusion, climactic finish, you know, it was just, it, it's one of Hollywood's best moments. Why are you son of a... Just incredible stuff. And the end result, once again, movie magic. And that's why this movie is what it is. There are so many scenes that occur throughout this movie where you just have lightning in a bottle happening every step of the way. Okay, now the final shot in the movie, the end credits, where you see both Hooper and Brody coming into shore. This was filmed not too far from the Cape Page Lighthouse in Chappaquiddick, as you could see it in the distance. Okay, I wanted to visit this exact location so badly, <laughs> you have no idea. My wife and I took the ferry over to Chappaquiddick, but we learned because the summer season hadn't technically started yet. We were there at the end of May. There were no shuttles to be taken from where you will leave your car. Because you, in order to get to the Cape Podge Lighthouse, you have to drive over miles of beach <laughs> just to get there. Because the season hadn't started yet, they didn't start the shuttles. So you would need a park pass, number one, which was like $200. And also, wait, wait. And also, let half of the air out of all four tires. Oh, and by the way, good luck to you if you get stranded halfway out there if you've never done this before. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't happening. Um, I, I was considering just hoofing it. As crazy as that sounds, I was really considering hiking it, but I, I couldn't do that to my wife. You know, that, that. <laughs> she even put up with all my filming location shenanigans, which she's really not into. <laughs> not like I am. Not even close. But she, she supports and appreciates what I do. You know, it was just a great experience all around. My wife had a great time. No, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this one. I worked really hard on it. And it was it was definitely a labor of love. And I'm, I'm going to be unloading some, some more classics soon as well. I, I'm looking forward to that. All the kind words and supporting comments and, and likes and whatnot, it's, it's, it's very much appreciated. So that being said, time to go. See you next time. As you may think, the local souvenir and thrift shops and restaurants on the island are themed to the gills with Jaws and shark paraphernalia. When December of 73, Joe Alves arrived at the Woods Hole Ferry Station, intended to go out to Nantucket Island because author of Jaws, Peter Benchley, recommended production designer Joe Alves to go out to Nantucket to scout it as a possible excellent location for the movie. So what happened was a storm was a brewing and the ferries canceled all their rides out to Nantucket, but Martha's Vineyard being a little bit closer to the mainland didn't have that issue. So ferries were still running out to Martha's Vineyard out here. So he didn't want to waste a day and he decided to come check this out instead. <laughs> and the rest is history.